but here we go. So as I introduced Jonathan Crow from Ninja One, uh, we'd like to announce again that um, that we just launched the Ninja RMM primary integration for Lifecycle Insights. So if you didn't have an additional primary integration, you can now um, use that. We're very excited about that. And we are on the week of Halloween having a uh, uh, how to get your clients love you uh, VCI uh, love your VCIO process. Definitely not Halloween though. I'm feeling like I'm not the only <laughs> did one. Did I say Halloween? This morning. You totally Valen did. It will Valentine's be the week of Valentine's Day. Day. I was yeah. like, did we go back in time? Maybe. I don't no, no, know. we're just ahead we're, of it. We're planning for October already. Yeah. <laughs> Shenanigans <laughs> right. are real. Like. I, I don't know why Halloween popped out. Uh, I was just, I was probably picturing both Jurassic Sock and Rogue One where we dressed up. So I thought it was Halloween, but it'll be Valentine's Day. How about that one? And uh, we have a webinar coming for you. So um, if this is, if you're listening to this recording, I will send this link out in the email as well. So be sure to jump on that. That'll be fun. We also have Kyle Christensen from K7, who's been on this call before coming. Uh, and we're excited to chat all things VCIO. Uh, and so next up, we brought Jonathan to the party today. Any other announcements, Alex, that you wanted to bring up before um, before we chat? No, I'm going to post the link to the to the Lifecycle Insights calendar that we're working on putting together out there so that, uh, so that everybody has access to that. And I'm going to pin this to the Slack channel as well so that everybody has both of those. But uh, other than that, let's rock and roll. All right. So um, Jonathan, welcome to the party. Master Thank you for having me. Marketing. Yeah, thanks for joining. So, uh, uh, Master of Marketing. Well, I, I don't know about that, but I mean, I will say that I'm a marketer who hates marketing, and I think that actually gives me an advantage. I Maybe. think um, everyone on this call would have probably uh, like that approach, right? <laughs> so I think I think judging from what I see in Reddit, Slack, LinkedIn, Facebook, et cetera, a lot of folks hate marketing ex unless it's done right. So I think having strong opinions on that is, is a good thing, which yeah. is sort of that I said that exact phrase, <laughs> leading leading statement. <laughs> well, this is this is very cool uh, to be in, invited here. Thank you, Marnie. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, everybody, for letting me crash. Um, it's cool to see some familiar uh, names and faces. Uh, Trisha, uh, good to see you again. You're kind enough to come on our ITX uh, summit a while back. Um, and yeah, a few others that I recognize names from um, from Discord and Slack and other places too. Very cool. Um, yeah, Marnie, I mean, you and I, we were saying like, okay, yeah, let's talk about some marketing and stuff. Um, Alex, early in the week, you had mentioned, um, we can talk about websites. It's something I love to dig into. Um, I love to review websites. That's become a thing that, um, other folks that are doing too. Um, so there's other places to get insights there. Um, but I'm curious what everyone here, uh, if, if there's, uh, um, some directions you'd like me to go in basically, um, I've got a few examples of some good websites. Um, I think the overall theme that I was thinking about um, is really going back to that most marketing sucks. And I think a <laughs> lot of the, the, the ninja partners I talk with who are working on their own marketing, it gets frustrating, right? Because it's it's just a hard thing to find time to do. When you do have things, it's hard. You, like you get work into it, but you, um, it's hard to see results. Um, a lot of people out there have their website. They devote some stuff to it. But a lot, not a lot of people are seeing a lot of traction with it. Um, blog posts, you know, you, you can go the, the agency route or get things that are kind of like the can templates, um, and maybe not see so much traction there, but going above and beyond that is really hard to do too, because it's hard to find the time, et cetera. Um, so, I'm happy to talk about any and all that. I've got some some thoughts and some challenges there um, for folks. And then um, I think Marnie, the other topic we we were you know we got to be timely. Got to get with the times here. Uh, we <laughs> were saying that we could talk uh, Chat GPT because obviously that's taking over the world and everyone's uh, uh, really hot on it and, and thinking about different use cases and such. So um, I guess I, I kind of like to put it to the crowd. Um, What's what's more appealing? What would be more useful? And is does is anyone like having these questions right now? Is anyone going through like a web working on their website or thinking about using Chat GPT? So um, while folks put comments in the chat last week, um, as I was prepping our report builder, I. Uh, I needed some blurbs to put in as executive summary sort of canned statements that I might use on a business review. And I put chat GPT, give me three sentences on um, 
a reason why I would want to move from hardware services to cloud services, right? Or you know, something along those lines, or tell me why MFA is important. And it popped out three sentences that had some highlights and I didn't have to come up with the starter sentence on it. So I thought, okay. And we talked last week about in our report builder, putting those canned statements, and then you would kind of have a cut and paste response for when you needed some some can components. So it was a good use of it um, for what we were doing. Uh, and of course you always edit it to make it your own, but that was for me, you know, I didn't want to just type a bunch of ASDF JKL semicolons in, as garble in the platform as I was doing an example. So I just could cut and paste from, from what Chad GBT told me. It's funny because, um, you know, Ray Orsini and the guys over at the MSP Media Network were talking about Chat GPT and how um, it, Google's version of it um, made a mistake and uh, improperly presented something in a demo and I was only half listening and cost Google a hundred billion dollars in uh, stock valuation when their stock tanked after it happened. Um, so I, I think these things are interesting. I think they're cool. I think they're dangerous as heck if we're not paying attention to them because uh, you know my comment to to um, to Ray and, and Tony about that conversation was that chat GPT will confidently lie to you. Yeah. And, and that's one of the problems we have with. It. Well, and I just put in the chat, the link to, you know, connect wise is now connected to chat GPT. I'd be interested to hear what people's thoughts are on the future of this. And if it's ready, how soon it's ready. If you would put any of your eggs in that basket today or, or what you guys feel about that. Well, there's so many use cases, right? I mean, as soon as this came out, people were like, oh, this could change everything. So like, obviously I think about it in marketing terms, but I mean, tons of people are looking at it in terms of scripts. I mean, I know, um, I think it's a Terra is, is going uh, out with their, you know, they're, they're, they're advertising that, um, you know, they're, they've integrated it within uh, for, for building scripts. But like you said, I mean, some of the early con uh, comments I saw on it were, okay, well, you still like, you need to review this. Like, yeah, it's saving time, which is great. Um, I mean, I think that's what it comes down to with all, maybe all use cases is that um, it's not like this is going to completely replace stuff yet. But for if you if you know what you're doing and know what to look out for, like if you if you were, uh, it becomes dangerous when you don't know how to vet it. But then if you do know what you're doing, um, I mean, as a writer and as a marketer, I love it because it can totally save me the just kind of like, I don't know, workman, pedestrian stuff of like, the eighty percent of a of a piece of content, right? That like, I'm going to add the twenty percent that really matters. It's going to add my own perspective. It's going to add actual examples, the real kind of meat stuff. Personality, but, if it, but it can t yeah, and the personality. But if it, it if it gets me the other part and the 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 big draft instead of a blank page I have to bang my head against, then perfect. That's that's Marnie's uh, Marnie's favorite phrase: defeat the blank page. Yeah, <laughs> right. and it does. Yeah. Hey guys, can you hear me okay? I'm driving. I don't know if I'm going to break up again. Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, no, you're good. Yeah, I, I mean, I worked for uh, a conglomerate before working for an MSP, and um, we had the chatbot dis uh, discussion. Um, the vendor we were using wanted us to manually add all the questions and answers. We did not have it in a wiki format, and Azure at the time had the ability that you just upload your wiki and it puts it into a chatbot. So it really got a lot of really good back-end technology and that's basically you know uh, backtrack to when teams was launched the back end was all there before teams was launched but they made it to a pretty basket uh put a bow on it and people started consuming it so chat gpt is just them putting a nice little bow on something that they've already had behind the scenes so i mean i'm a huge fan of that technology that you just you have your knowledge, you just load it, and it does the rest. So, I mean, it's, it's great for the future. I'm excited about the getting it more in the mainstream. Uh, of course, Skynet and I, uh, we're not friends, uh, but it's going to go the way it's going to go. Yeah, I mean, great. I, I think it's, it's absolutely, there's lots of interesting conversations happening. Um, I don't know if how many folks here are members um, of, if anyone's a member of the Tech Tribe, but there's a really interesting thread there um happening and then um what do we got nick ross from um his blog t minus 365 was talking to i'm gonna drop a link to it um talk about uh talking about building basically kind of like a proof of concept thing uh where not chat gpt but going into the open ai um api 
and um and then integrating that into with his PSA and, and Microsoft Teams um to do some things too. I mean, yeah, I I don't that that would be my question is um when do you feel comfortable enough with um customer facing stuff, you know? Well, yeah. Matt, I'm curious about your because Matt put in there would love to see how it could start solving tickets, right? If you're seeing the yeah. same problem over again. And Brian's got his hand up. So let's uh let's yank him up. Was that on purpose, Brian, or were you just uh pressing buttons? All right, <laughs> on in. I was I was being polite. That's all right. Um, uh, two things that I see low hanging fruit for MSPs. Um, uh, number one is you know, KB articles, project scopes. I, I literally asked it. I had a client that wanted to migrate from Meraki MDM to Intune, and I said, "Tell me what this looks like." In it, wrote out something that probably would have taken me a half an hour in thirty seconds. Wow. And I literally proofread it, copy pasted it, added to it, and boom, there was the project scope, right? Um, the other thing that's really interesting for us, just because we have a leadership team now that meets quite a bit, um, is the team's premium is going to basically record your meetings and then analyze them and give you bullet point notes about what was discussed that you can walk away with so that you don't have to sit there in your meeting and focus on taking notes the whole time. It does it for you, right? So those are two things that I thought were really cool um, that we're going to be using it for uh, right away. As a side marketing note on that, um, uh, Tracy Kreitz from Breach Secure Now is the mayor of her town and she found an artist. Yeah, I know. What? <laughs> she found an artist that came to her um, like yearly planning meeting and sat there and aggregated the idea into an infographic. And so all of the vision planning of what's happening for Fredericksville, Colorado, Frederick something, Colorado, maybe it's just Frederick, Colorado, is now memorialized in this infographic about this is like the vision of our company. I thought that would be really fascinating for a company that was doing like a vision setting or a company kickoff to have this artist come and do what chat GPT is <clears throat> going to do in teams, right? And aggregate the meeting, but also then turned it into artwork. Um, I thought that I was- like the AI could turn it into artwork. We've seen how well AI artwork. Well, out. that is true. You then take the language that GPTs grabbed for you and throw it over to the art generator yeah. and you might have a cool infographic. Yeah, I'm curious. Um, you know, obviously there's so much to be, like we're so early on, right? Um, Pricing is a question, like how all that's going to really kind of settle and 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 the extent to what Microsoft's going <laughs> to do with it, all this. But um, I'm just curious if folks are thinking already about um, if they're getting questions from, you know, clients um, and if you're finding yourselves advising the same way that you would advise on teams, like if you're, if you're feeling like that's something that you should be looking into or not or not. Anybody get any questions about I, clients I, or I mean, not, not so much? I, I Maybe with larger clients, I don't know about in the SMB space as much. I have a, a larger co-managed client that's using UiPath, uh, which to help automate a lot of their processes, which uses AI, right? Um, marketing, like I think it could definitely be used in marketing. Um, I've used it to re-explain something in 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 more layman's terms, right? Like, hey, yeah, this makes sense what are to me. Three ways to say, can you log out? Yeah. <laughs> explain this to a 15-year-old, right? And it's like, all right, we're going to rewrite this as if we were talking to a 15-year-old, you know? Um, yeah. Oh, I could that's just a get chat GPT to filter me before I use the four-letter word. It would give me a better answer. It is interesting with the 2021 timeframe on it that it certainly yeah. doesn't have like the bleeding edge, cutting edge information, which I think is another filter that you always have to look through as well. Yeah. Especially say for those companies on the call that started in 2019, right? Like there's been less chat GPT than we've been in existence kind of thing. Yeah, it's a good point. I mean, because you know, you would think like another ideal use case if once that constraint is removed, um is having um kind of like rapid fire rapid response stuff um for news i mean maybe you could even beat huntress to something right like you could um uh get messaging out to your clients next time there's a um whatever big security thing that they're going to be asking questions about 
uh, it could really help you with your speed there. Um, but of course, that's limited for that 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 time frame now that you're machine learning. Well, that reminds me that the folks that created Instagram, right? They just announced that they're creating an AI generated focused specialized news feed for humans, right? So I believe they said talk TikTok in text form. Um, oh God, <laughs> I know. Which I was like, what? Okay, that kind of breaks me a little bit. Yeah, um, can we do it in TikTok minus the spyware? In text <laughs> yeah, it's like Maybe. I'm not sure. I would say I'm starting with this as a basis and going from there, but whatever. Um, uh -huh. Anyway, but that's sort of the, yeah, the AI generated newsfeed, could you, is that something you would include on your marketing website, even maybe if you, you know, so had some sort of funneler to say updates or hot off the presses, literally. Well, this, this gets kind of at the, um, unless, and feel free to, to, to draw back if, if marketing's, uh, if you don't like the direction I'm going to go in here, but um yeah, uh, because um, Brian, yeah, you brought, brought it up with marketing, some different use cases there. Um, I think this gets at the heart of it. Like, on one hand, you look at this, and uh, I think the knee jerk response is like, great, we can do more. Um, and there's a couple of resources I'm going to share in the chat. And, and basically, going back to my comment where I say I'm a marketer who doesn't like marketing, I think <laughs> most stuff sucks. Um, it's awful. And we don't need more of it, of that awful content, right? Um, and I think the reason it sucks is it's lazy. And why is it lazy? It's because it's not 